Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for choosing to come to Pulteney Town and Thrumster Church this morning. I'm Rob Peterson. I'm the mission worker, for those of you who may not know me. Andrew, the minister, is out on leave. I'll be taking the service today. <clears throat> the first thing we'll do is we'll start with some notices. Now, you guys will have these there in your seats, as you're probably well aware. Uh, the first thing I'd like to bring your attention to is the outreach team meeting on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll be meeting to discuss the next couple months, so please keep us in prayer for that. The next thing to say is the walking group is scheduled to meet and start on Wednesday. Hopefully the weather holds and we're able to do that, so keep that in prayer as well. And the last intimation, and a very exciting one, is the Growing Together, which Zelia will be leading this week. And so we're very excited and very grateful for her and her leadership. So come to that, which is at 7 o'clock, Wednesday, upstairs. Let's start with prayer. <clears throat> Lord, we gather to worship you today, the one who is above all names, Jesus the Savior, the Heavenly Father, merciful and mighty, the Holy Spirit, our ever-present helper. We come before you now, the Godhead three in one, to bring our prayers, our worship, our pains and regrets, all of our thanks, all of our offerings of our hearts and our minds. Lord, we come to lay these at the feet of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to be with us this morning as we also come to repent. Help us by the Holy Spirit to do this and turn from our sins and all the things that bring you displeasure. Jesus, you told us that even now the ax is laid at the root of the trees. There, therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Help us, Holy Spirit, to assess our hearts and our minds. And if there's rotten fruit, not to wait for some arbitrary day in the future when we will repent, but to take the words of Jesus seriously and ask for forgiveness now, that we may all be fruitful to your glory. We, we pray that you would find a pleasant and pleasing orchard here, even if it's right here in Wick. Help us now as we turn to lift our voices and our hearts and all the contents in it to you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll start with our first song, which is Behold Our God.
We'll turn now to our first Bible reading, and I'd like to ask Kev to come up and read us a psalm, Psalm 71. Rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge, to which I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth I have relied on you. You have brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Do not cast me away when I'm old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. For my enemies speak against me. Those who wait to kill me conspire together. They say, God has forsaken him. Pursue him and seize him, for no one will rescue him. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly, God, to help me. May my accusers perish the shame. May those who want to harm me be covered with scorn and disgrace. As for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous deeds, of your saving acts all day long though I know not how to relate them all. I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteous deeds, yours alone. Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation your mighty acts to all who are to come. Your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You who have done great things, who is like you, God? Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once more. I will praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, my God. I will sing praise to you with the lyre, Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you, I whom you have delivered. My tongue will tell of your righteous acts all day long. For those who wanted to harm me have been put to shame and confusion. This is the word of God. May the grace of Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kev. We turn to worship again, singing the song, Yet Not I.
we turn to pray again our prayers of intercession. Lord God, we come again to pray to you. In your presence, Lord, we bring the contents of our heart, our thankfulness, the contents of our minds, the things that trouble us. Lord, we'll take a moment now collectively as a congregation just to pour those things out to you before we continue on in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your many provisions. Thank you for never forsaking us or leaving us. Lord, we're grateful for all the things that you've provided. We're grateful for all the volunteers that help here. We're thankful for Andrew and his ministry here and how he cares and loves for people. Lord, we ask especially now that you would be gentle and merciful with him. Be gracious to him, Lord, and Susan as well. We ask the Holy Spirit would be a great encourager to her. Lord, I'm, I'm happy to hear that he's still singing songs to you from his heart. Lord, he's hurting, but he's not overcome. Lord, you are good. You are faithful. Lord, I bring forward the congregation to you and their many pains that they've just laid before you and also their thankfulness, Lord. You know each one of them by name. You know every content that's inside of them. Thank you, Lord, that nothing escapes your view. Lord, we'd also like to pray for the things out with our congregation. I would like to pray for the NHS and all the people there that are waiting for operations, surgeries, those who are suffering physical ailments, Lord, that the doctors and those people in charge would have hearts for you first and foremost and be loving and kind to others. We also pray for the people in Westminster and Holyrood, Lord, as uh, we see many things and there's many different perspectives Lord, help your believers to keep one perspective. And that's their eyes fixed on you first and foremost. Help them to endure whatever criticism, mocking, all the things, Lord, that you said would come. Help them to endure those things by the Holy Spirit. Lord, we also pray for Suresh uh, and all the other missionaries that we know. Lord, the people that you've called by name and sent into the field. Lord, that you would sustain them, some facing the utmost and most violent persecutions. Lord, you see them, and you have not forsaken them. Help them to be encouraged, loved. And Lord, in some way, help them to know that they're being prayed for. And last, Lord, we again lift up the conflict, the war in Ukraine. And Lord, we don't just pray for the Ukrainians, which are suffering, but also the Russian civilians as well. Those people in bondage. Those people without a voice, Lord. They have a voice and you hear it. Praise be to your name, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll now have our second Bible reading. And I'll be reading from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 13. Here we see Paul writing to the Philippians, and he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. 
I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through Him who gives me strength. Amen. We turn again now to sing a song, Glory Be to God the Father. Glory be to God the Father. Last week we had Janet here with us, and she was speaking on the great love of God as we had communion. And it got me thinking this week, because I knew I'd be taking the service this week, about uh, what's coming next. We know that in four weeks from now, Easter is upon us, and I thought to myself, how can we get ourselves, our hearts and our minds, ready for Easter? You might know in the Old Testament there's 613 commands summed up into the great Ten Commandments. And I thought, that's a lot of things for us to get ready for. So I started looking on the internet. Does anyone know what this thing is called? And maybe you've seen it before. This is called Maslow's Triangle. And this is a tool, a theoretical tool, that many psychologists will use to see where you're at and try to help you. Now, I need to make a short disclaimer here. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a doctor. I am a proponent of them, and if you're seeing one, that is great. My uh, greatest accomplishments and my uh, help has come from having someone there to bounce ideas off of, and she was a Christian counselor and helped me in many tremendous ways. So I'm not at all going to be picking on that field at all. I only use this as a tool for us to look at and to say that Christians actually have all the same needs that anyone else does, and that's what this is all about. So, before I uh, click off of this screen, 
I wanted to show what this is about. So you see it's a pyramid, of course. In the beginning, there's the physiological needs, your food and your water and these type of things. And it goes all the way up, so the theory goes. If you get this, then you go to this, and you go to this, and all the way up to you find out who you really are, your true self. That's the idea. You're living at your fullest potential. And then actually you see up here, there's this transcendence. This is the things that are beyond the human thing. Some people might call it Zen or Nirvana, but most often today people don't recognize God. And actually, God might actually be somewhere up here. But anyways, this is a simpler version of it. This, the last slide had eight. This one has five. And so I figure what we do is we look at our basic needs, our psychological needs, and this thing self-fulfillment. But we need to start at the beginning. We need to start in the beginning. So I thought, okay, food. It's very simple. We want to get ready for Easter. That's the idea, keeping that in our minds. We want to get ready for Easter. If we were to collectively, as a congregation, say all the foods that we want to have, there'd be all over the place. Some people say, I want uh, fish and chips. Some people like, to, I'd like a steak and pie. I know there's some person here, uh, a sweet lady that would love to have a Big Mac. Another guy eats a whole box of chickens. Another guy might have a biscuit, any type of biscuit. For me, I'd love to have a Mexican carne asada burrito. It's a big one, full of steak, and it's delicious. And you might be thinking, well, it's not even noon yet. That's too heavy. Let's not talk about that. As a side note, the kids and I went to California. We had them for breakfast at 7.30 in the morning. They're that good. My point is, the first problem we might see is that there's infinite boundaries, even in this room. And it's not just with food, as it goes all the way up the chain. There could be infinite boundaries in a room like this. All sorts of different needs. And so I looked and I saw this. And again, these, this is just a tool, a psychological tool. It's a theoretical thing, and there's many different variations of it. And maybe it looks more like this, where it's all the way infinite that way, but there's still this mountain to climb. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll run with that. But that brings up a second problem, that access is denied. You can't get to your true self, your self-actualization, if the levels are locked to get up there. You can't, even though they say you are what you eat, I'll never be a carne asada burrito. So that doesn't work. We have to go all the way up, but access is denied. Which brings the third problem. As we look in the world and we know, there's many outside factors that we have no control over whatsoever. There might be death in the family. There might be wars. As we think of the Ukrainians, we prayed about them. Divorces, cheating in the family. Redundancies. And it's not always bad. It could be a good thing. You might have a, a promotion. You might be retiring. You might be all sorts of things. There's outside factors that are going to affect you getting, according to this model, to your true self. Fourth issue, our own issues. Okay, so maybe we climb up a little bit and we get up there. Okay, we get, we get to this little level here, esteem, the accolades and the awards. When is enough enough? When is enough praise and time, uh, money? When is it enough? The thing is, we're sinners. We haven't even started to talk about it, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but we're sinners. When is enough enough? Which brings up problem five. Self-realization. Let's say we, uh, we do this. Do, 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 do. We're up here. Hooray. What happens when you get there and you're not able to stand the person that you see in the mirror? It's always amazing to me when people are shocked by a celebrity or someone who seemingly has it all and they've committed suicide. It's horribly sad, it's painful, and we all grieve, of course, and it's right to grieve, but maybe this whole thing, right here underneath, they look and they see they don't like it. They see what they've had to do to get there, the people they lied to, the people they cheated and stole from. You can't escape that. Problem six, it's all prone to collapse. It's built on you. One thing, anything. And as I said earlier, we're sinners. It could be that you have a drinking problem, a drug problem, a sexual immorality problem, a gambling problem. It could be anything. You like to lie, you're a gossip. It doesn't matter. Anything can send us to what I would call, and this isn't a psychological term, what I would call the hidden basement. And that's when we, again, realize from the top 
or anywhere along the way, that we go into a free fall. Our prestige, our awards, our medals, they mean nothing to us. We go straight through that level. We're coming down now. Belongingness and loved ones, maybe we've hurt all those ones and they've turned away from us and we go straight through that. Boom, we've messed all that up and we see it and can't even do it. Safety and security, it doesn't matter because I'm struggling to breathe. So much so that I don't want food and water. Now you might recall that I said earlier I love this carne asada burrito. But friends, I can tell you in my personal life, I've been in situations where I had to psychologically tell myself, if you do not eat just a couple bites, you will die. It's very real. Even as Christians, we can experience these things. So what we call hitting rock bottom. Now, I like this little pictogram because it shows a guy lying on the rock. And as Christians will know, they already know where you're going with that one, Jesus being the rock. But it also shows a guy being crushed by a diamond. And that's the falseness of what people chase after and how it actually comes down and crushes them. But they land on the rock. And isn't it amazing when you hear all the testimonies of people who've turned to Christ that even though they may be at rock bottom, even there, even there Jesus Christ is there with them. He didn't forsake them. He was with them. Well, that's a lot of stuff to take in. So let's call this halftime. Okay, let's get back on track because our minds are focused on Easter and uh, this coming King and what He's about to do on the cross. So let's focus there. And let's focus now with Scripture. This is a well-known passage. Most Christians will know this. It's John three sixteen through 21. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. What that means, Christians, non-Christians, it doesn't matter. God sees every step. Every step, everything that we could go through in this whole thing whether we agree with that or not, it's all real problems. God sees it all. And I wonder if he had thoughts on the subject, so I did some more digging, and yes, he might. And we find that in Matthew, Matthew six nineteen through 34. And here we see Jesus saying, Do not store for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy. And where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin, and yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how your God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things. 
And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Seeking God first. Remember how I said in the beginning of that big eight-tiered pyramid, at the top maybe there was some sort of God figure. Well, it says here that God, we should seek Him first. That takes the conventional model and it dumps it on its head. How can we seek God first? How can we put Him first? And we find the answer to that in Matthew. Jesus, when he was talking with Pharisees who were trying to trick him and entrap him, he says to them, the most important commandment. Jesus replies, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbors yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Anything we are dealing with on that whole pyramid, anything. For all of our many needs, we need to start right here. For all the 613 commandments that I made reference to earlier, starts right here. Getting our hearts and minds ready for Easter starts right here. Now let's look at the first steps of what those might be if we start right there. We find that in John 15. Jesus says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's command and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, And that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Some of the amazing things that happen when we start with Jesus. First of all, all the filth, falsities, and facades, they fade. In the presence of God, in the presence of God Almighty, you can't hide anything. So the impurities fade away. They're washed by the blood of Jesus Christ first and foremost. The next thing is you start with your true identity. Remember, we were trying to reach our true identity. No, 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 no. Jesus says you start with it, and it's not who you say you are. It's who I say you are. You are my child. I love you. I died for you. You start as a person in his kingdom, a child of God. You start with your true identity, not built on your works, which are corruptible and fallible, but on the Lord's and His work on the cross. You start full of joy. I don't know if you notice what Jesus said. You start full of joy. Not happiness, which is fickle and fading and prone to our temperament on the day. You start with joy. And also all the levels, as we said before, you had to reach the levels. And they were locked? No, they're unlocked. You're set free from whatever shackles you. And the most, maybe the most important one here is at the bottom. You begin to look to help others and set up yourself. So our, our needs here, through God's love, we look at, the, again, the top. If we're going from the top now, we start with God. Our self-actualization, our identity, I've already talked about that. The respect and the self-esteem, it doesn't come through our work anymore. It comes through what Jesus Christ did. And that changes the game. It helps us to love and belong and give love to other people. And as you look even further out, the safety needs, you look at Paul and other prophets, how they forsake safety for the sake of other people, to love others. And isn't it amazing when you think about this in real life? And that's what this is about, taking the pragmatic and the spiritual and showing that Christ is the way. You think about all the missionaries that have gone overseas who forsake their own safety, maybe their own physiological needs. You think about the missionaries now. You think about all the charitable organizations. And what are they doing? They're bringing water, food, shelter, etc. It's an outpouring of Christ's love. 
So I thought maybe instead of looking at it like a pyramid, this maybe actually, for me, it was more what it looks like. Maybe it's that telescope is our life. And there's different sections of it, of course, but God is in the beginning and He will be at the end. And we want to let that light go through everything. It might look like that or it might look like this. It might look like that. Christians are not free from pain. I'm not up here saying, oh, Jesus is going to, everything's going to be right after we save, are saved and, and these type of things. That's not what I'm saying. And that would be wrong of me to say that because we look in the Bible and we see that it's not true. Christians are not free from pain, grief, trials, and suffering. We just have an unending source of love and comfort that should spill out onto every single one of our needs. Remember Paul's words to the Philippians? He said, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And also the words of the psalmist, since my youth, God, you have taught me. And to this day, I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all those who are to come. Your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You who have done great things, who is like you, God? Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. If it's time to restart, that's one of the great things about being a Christian. Jesus says, I'll forgive you 70 times 7. It's not, oops, you messed up and you're done. You're out. No more for you. You in the back. See you later. That's not how it is with Jesus. If we're going to get ready for Easter, it starts right here. If you're ready to start, some people might be watching on YouTube. They're ready to start. We want to be there. We have elders here who would love to pray with you, and you can pray yourself. God, I've messed up so many things in life, but I see your goodness. Lord Jesus, would you rule my life? Would you help me to turn from the things, Lord? that I've made it, and would you embrace me? Jesus says, yes, I will. I will embrace you. Even if you're a leper, I will embrace you. It starts right there. This is how we begin to get ready for Easter. I'll turn now to our last song, which is a video and that's in Christ alone.
God, be with us all as we go forth out into the world in which you created. Help us to be light and salt. Help us to love one another. But Lord, first and foremost, help us to love you with everything that we have. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.